care about the moral state of the person picking up your garbage? Would it bother you, for example, if the person flipping your burgers at a fast food restaurant wasn't so nice to be around? What if your doctor was cheating on his wife or had some shady dealings with foreign businesses? What if your child's teacher was a bigot or a racist? The only thing that really matters is that they get the job done, right? That's essentially the argument being made by many members of the alt-right and many evangelical Christians who continue to support Donald Trump. The notion is that politics isn't all that different from any other practice. It's a business and an ugly one at that. If you believe that's true, then supporting Donald Trump actually makes some sense. In that context, he fills the role of a strong man, the person hired to do battle, like a mercenary or a hitman. This is the person you need to teach your enemies who's boss. No turning the other cheek, apologizing, or any signs of humility, because that doesn't work in the swamp. You need an agent of chaos to break DC. There's a movie reference that might help bring this type of outsourcing to light. In one of my favorite films, The Dark Knight, the backdrop of the movie's action is that Batman has pushed the mob to the brink of desperation. They've got almost nothing left. And so while fighting for survival, the mob turns to chaos in the form of Heath Ledger's Joker. The Joker unleashes chaos in the city as a result and ends up being Batman's greatest challenge. Here's a relevant scene from the film in which Alfred makes this point. Targeting me won't get their money back. I knew the mob wouldn't go down without a fight, but this is different. They've crossed the line. You crossed the line first, so you squeezed them, you hammered them to the point of desperation. And in their desperation, they turned to a man they didn't fully understand. Criminals aren't complicated, Alfred. We just need to figure out what he's after. With respect, Master Wayne, perhaps this is a man you don't fully understand either. A long time ago, I was in Burma. My friends and I were working for the local government. They were trying to buy the loyalty of tribal leaders by bribing them with precious stones. But their caravans were being raided in a forest north of Rangoon by a bandit. So we went looking for the stones. But in six months, we never met anyone who traded with him. One day, I saw a child playing with a ruby the size of a tangerine. The bandit had been throwing them away. So why steal them? Well, because he thought it was good sport. Because some men aren't looking for anything logical, like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Many evangelicals see Washington, D.C. the way the mob saw Gotham. It's a place they used to own, but they've lost it to the establishment, a swamp that needs chaos in order to be fixed. And that's why they've hired Donald Trump. This, of course, isn't how we as Americans have handled challenges in our past. For example, it's entirely different than the way conservatives talk about the American founders. When you hear conservatives look back at the American Revolution, for example, they speak of reverence for men like George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. It's more than just what those men did. It's who they were. These were people who were tough, but they weren't vicious or cruel. They had strong moral character, humility before God, and beliefs they weren't willing to sacrifice at any cost. Motivated by ideology and faith, they faced far worse dangers than we do today existential threats to the country's livelihood, the countless guns of an invading army far larger than theirs, and the challenge of trying to bring states together to make a single country. These weren't just left and right disagreements or a biased media. They were threats of almost certain death. And yet, these men overcame all these odds not by being mean or vulgar or savage businessmen or chaotically firing everyone who disagreed with them. They did it by sticking to their faith, finding unity in God, and strength from their shared belief in liberty. They worked together, compromised often, and exuded the highest of virtue when our country needed it most. The founders weren't perfect, to be sure, and at times they didn't live up to their own ideals, but they knew it was precisely those ideals that were most important. If we were to relate their type of ethics to, say, the Batman film I just mentioned, we might find a good comparison in Christian Bale's version of Batman. Unlike the mob, he refuses certain methods, such as killing his opponents, for moral reasons. He explains that it's the way he does business, and not just what his goals are, 
that makes him different than the villains. And so what made America great was this type of morality. For the founders, it was the promise of liberty fueled by virtue and death. It was the fact that in our darkest hour, as a young country, we turned to the best among us instead of succumbing to victimization and fear. That's not the path that Trump supporters have chosen. Most of them will admit they've gone on a completely new and different route. Unlike the founders, they see politics as war, and in their mind, the only thing that matters is getting theirs. And so, whatever one's reasons may be for continuing to support Donald Trump, they cannot be conservative.